Kamala Harris came to Houston and everybody in the city was so excited. I don't know if you're more excited about Kamala or Beyonce because everyone knows Beyonce is like Houston's favorite daughter, Destiny's child. I'm a survivor. I ain't gonna give up. I wonder how many babies in that audience were not born because their mother told their stomach, say, you're not gonna be a survivor, baby. You ain't gonna survive this time. Mama got a life to live. We're gonna get back to that in a second. And so this rally has so much energy and I wanted to watch it. And so as I'm trying to stream this rally, I hear music. I, when I turn on, I hear music. And so she had a DJ. I don't know if Kamala picked this DJ, but he was he was jamming. I heard, whistle while you twerk. I'll go ahead and start it. Make that kuchu and whistle while you twerk. Twerk some. I said, what does Kamala know about some yin yang twins? And now everybody in the audience, they setting the tone. They getting the energy up high. And everybody looks like they're having fun. It looks like some type of rave, some type of festival. It looks like a freak off. It looks like a did he freak up? Everybody about to get freaky in that joint, huh? Every woman in that boy doing a bank head bounce because you know these are older women. Kamala is an older broad. And so now after this DJ is playing this music in the background is a flashing light. Flashing light. Freedom. 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 And it's going to the beat. And everybody's on their feet talking about freedom. 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 And I read the, the words behind it. And it says reproductive rights. Freedom. 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 Reproductive rights in the background said, Whistle while you twerk, go ahead and start it. Make that coach and whistle while you twerk. And I said, Hold on, what kind of orchestration is this where the music gets you into the mood to make a baby? This is baby making booty music when you meet a girl at the club and you don't know if she's pretty or not. She got makeup, her makeup is runny, her booty looks jiggly, and all you can think is clap, 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 clap them cheeks. Yes, this is all you're thinking about. And that's the environment. And then as you get into this in this club, instead of handing you a, 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 a condom, instead of handing you some type of other prophylactic, they hand you a plan B or they hand you a knife and say, when the night is over, please end the situation because we don't want to have no memories from this encounter that we didn't had after this crazy rally. And so now this is the energy and I'm just trying to pay attention to this Kamala rally. This is hours before Kamala's ever going to take the stage. It's just music and people dancing. And I'm confused. I'm like, why in the world are these people so infatuated with sending babies to go see Jesus? Why don't these people love babies? And now me personally, I kind of want to be at the rally because I want to experience this, these political people and their, and their totality. But I'm so glad that I wasn't at that stadium in that presence because I don't know how many baby spirits were hovering around that stadium chanting all together, Mommy, we miss you. Mommy, we need you. Mommy, I want to be a survivor too, Mommy. Babies' lives matter too. From one month all the way to nine months, I think babies' lives matter. And so when Kamala is creating this energy of ending babies, I started to ask a question because I love women so much, especially all these women who are going to go to this rally. I was looking forward to Beyonce because Beyonce being a Houston's first daughter and everything, being Destiny's child and everything, and having such an impactful career, I'm looking for Auntie Yonce to give us some words of wisdom to encourage young black women to go and start families and be productive superstars the way that they were designed to be. And when she comes out there, she gives a whole bunch of word mumbo jumbo. I'm a mother. I'm a citizen. I love my daughter. And I think that we should be able to just terminate babies in me as a man, as a dad. If I had daughters, because I have sons, I would never want my son to come to me and tell me, Dad, my girlfriend said my baby can't exist because we don't have enough money right now. Or, hey, Dad, I was dealing with a woman. I really liked her a whole lot. And then she got pregnant. And instead of having my baby, she said, bye to my baby. She asked me how I felt about that. And I don't even know how to feel about that. Are you a man? Have you ever had, has a person ever said bye to a baby on you? How'd that make you feel? It's happened to me before. And I didn't have a say in the matter. And so when the woman told me that she sent my baby to go see Jesus, I just looked at her. And I just wondered in my mind, I wanted to know where she was at her in her mind to not to want to have my baby. I wanted to look in the mirror and see what kind of person am I for this person to terminate my baby. And then I looked up at God and I said, God, what kind of God are you to allow this woman to say to buy this baby? And it brings me right back to Kamala at this rally with thousands of people. A million people watched the celebration of the execution of unborn babies because that's somebody's political agenda. 
I'm looking for Beyonce to say, hi, my name is Auntie Beyonce. I've been married for 20 years and I have beautiful children and I would never want you to endure the pain of saying goodbye to a baby that you have already named. I name my children, as soon as my children are conceived, I have a name inside my brain for these babies because I believe that their life matters, their identity matters. When my babies were growing in their mama's tummies, I would talk to my babies, I would read to my babies, I'd say ABCs to these babies because they have receptors, they have ears, they have feelings, they are growing, they are real. Every little baby in America is more than just a fetus. Babies are valuable. Man, there are families right now, when you when talk about reproductive rights, there are families trying to pay for IVF, pay hundreds of thousands of dollars just to have a baby. And then when you target poor people, people who don't have any money, single women, struggling American families, your solution to them is to execute the most valuable resource that all of humanity has. Let's talk about babies. Zoom in right there because we got to focus. The biggest crisis in America right now is infertility. Most women understand that PCOS, polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome, whatever it's called, PCOS, it's affecting millions of women. It's causing you to be infertile. Some women are growing beards because some women are gaining weight, fat fingers. It's a hormone imbalance that's happening to the American woman. But instead of talking about actual female health care and an actual condition that's harming women in America, you want to talk about an elective procedure that sends babies to go away. We will never talk about chastity. We will never talk about being responsible with this beautiful body that God has given us. So many of you women are extremely beautiful. And instead of having the experience of murder, you should have the experience of birth. But instead of us having this beautiful conversation, the vice president wants to talk about reproductive rights while you're having a flashing light in the background talking about freedom, freedom, freedom. Murdering babies is not freedom. Just giving yourself to every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the world is not freedom. Dear Kamala Harris, getting married at 50 years old and raising someone else's children, that's not freedom. I promised that young Kamala, when she was a little girl up there in Canada, she never had the idea in her brain that she was going to grow up to be a barren woman and to, to marry some man and raise his children. That was not the goal. But she had to compromise because she put finances in front of family she put finances in front of men and now she ends up this cat lady is talking to houston women and in giving you the advice to have a life just like hers i'm like please please i would never i would never ask any american woman to sacrifice her child i want i want to know about your your finances i want to know about the job i would rather you get a better job so you have enough money to take care of that child or find a man who loves you so much to help you take care of that child than to send you to a doctor who's going to take some 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 tools man the, the procedure of making babies go away is so crazy they give you poison right and after the poison kicks in they go in there and they make sure that baby is unalived and then they break them apart and they suck them out and you gotta be on bed rest this is not a good experience but they sell it to you like it's positive. And so when I say that I wanted to see Kamala's rally, I just really wanted to know, why do you want to send babies to go see Jesus so much? And how can we help you? How can we understand the plight of the American woman so that you'll never be in a position to where you have to choose between a job and a baby? Because that's crazy. You deserve so much better because you're the greatest American alive.